chapter 1. And uh, like in Genesis, after a chapter or so, I take an intermission to, to discuss other things. Because there's a lot of things that I always wanted to share, with, which I feel God wants uh, us to hear. And today, we're skipping on Ephesians as an intermission as we go to Ephesians. And, talking, and today, we'll be talking about this type discipleship. The concept and meaning of what is a disciple. CCF, we're known for that, discipleship program. Mm -hmm. We have the D-group system. We have the D12 system. But do we really understand what it means to be a disciple? That is the question. And my desire is after we hear God's word this morning, we will understand the meaning of what discipleship is. And that we will desire to be a disciple. According to what scripture says. Now, for us to understand this, basically it's like a journey. Let's understand first the land in the time of Jesus. You know, in, 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 in the Judea region, there's this place called Sethopolis. It's the, in the northern, northeast, south, southern part of the Sea of Galilee. That place is very metro, metropolitan. It's a, it's a Roman city with all the luxuries of it, with all the pleasures. It has elaborate villas for the rich, like any village. It has running water. If you're, if you're, if, if you're uh, thirsty, there's water that will go to your, to your house. The streets are paved in cobbled stone. Because it's a, it's a major city. And there has, it has an agora, a marketplace. We're in all the goods that is available in the whole Roman Empire is available there at the Agora. There will be a lot of temples dedicated to Athena, to Zeus, to, the, to, to all the gods. Because you know, the Romans, they believe in all the gods. That's why when Jesus Christ came and proclaimed, and the Jews proclaimed there's another god, and it's Yahweh, Yeshua, no problem. Plus one. No issue. So, so Sacropolis is, is, such a, is, is such a place. It has a coliseum. It has a gymnasium. It has a library. It has theaters. It has arenas. It has bathhouses. Everything. In today's parlance, it's BGC. Right? Modern. But guess what? Jesus Christ didn't go there to choose his disciples. Why? You would think the best and the brightest would be there. Right? But instead, he chose his disciples from where? Galilee. Right? Why Galilee? In fact, Jesus was born in Nazareth. He grew up in Capernaum. Right? But a lot of his disciples was chosen in this place called uh, uh, Bethsaida. Something like that. Be Bethsaida. We're, we're in Andrew was from there. Philip was from there. Peter was from there. James was from there. John was, was from there. Five of them. Th that town is about 800 people. Ten families. Everybody knew each other. The streets there are not made of cobblestone. It's dust. Dusty street. Nothing 
like that. If, if they're thirsty, they would have to get their water on the spring or on the well. They would carry it. It's, a, it's totally different. It's a do, totally different area. <coughs> they only had one structure, typically in the towns of Galilee. The synagogue. That's where, that's where they have family meetings, community meaning. That's where they learn education. That's where they worship, right? And in that synagogue, there's this chair. It's called the Moses seat, where in the teacher, the rabbi, would normally sit and read and teach on the other side of that of that um, uh, synagogue is, is is a place wherein scriptures the scripture the Tanah is kept a synagogue is a synagogue because the Tanah the Bible is kept there because it's expensive to have a Bible not everybody has a Bible, right? Because you to have a Bible, it's handwritten. So, pangmayaman lang talaga, may Bible ka sa bahay, may yaman ka talaga. But on a typical town, no one has a Bible. It's in the synagogue. Wherein they would go there, a rabbi would go there, he would, he would open the scroll, and when he opens his scroll, he will show it to the congregation before he, before he reads it. To show that the words are there, the words of God was written there, and people will try to touch it, and people will try to kiss it, to symbolize that may the words of God be sweet in my in my mouth. And there the rabbi will explain. The community was built around the synagogue. Now, what makes Galilee special? Why did you know? When God the Father decided His Son to come here on earth, He decided Him to be a Galilean. Why Galilee? What makes it special being not as progressive as the other towns around? Today it might be, what's a small town? San Mateo? I don't know. Rizal or whatever. It's a, not BGC totally. You know why? Because Galileans were known to be passionate of God's word. They, 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 they believe, no, they're convicted that it's God and God alone. Nothing else. They don't have any other pagan gods. Not in other places when there's a lot of gods. Only one God. But most importantly, Discipleship was invented by the Galileans. That concept of discipleship was a Galilean perspective. Rabbis, that was a Galilean concept. Now, Capernaum, where God, Jesus, grew up, is known to be the Harvard, the Yale, the Wharton. For discipleship. So most of the famous rabbis would be going to Capernaum to teach. People, disciples looking for rabbis will go to Capernaum, will at least go to Galilee to look for a rabbi. And a rabbi who's looking for disciples would also go to Galilee. Because they're known for that. If you tell me I'm looking for good engineering students, I'll probably go to Mapua. They're known for that. Right? Dentistry, maybe UE. Law, maybe Ateneo or UP. Discipleship, ang Galilee. What school? Capernaum. Nandiyan yung mga Galilean teachers. The good rabbis are all from that place. And the heart of the concept of discipleship is the rabbis. 
Now, th there's two types of teacher during the time. There is the ordinary teacher. When I say ordinary, they're not. They're really good. And I'll explain that later. And there's the rabbi. Rabbi is, is different. Now, every person, every disciple in Galilee has one desire in their life. Their ultimate goal, maybe for lawyers, the ultimate goal is to be, for a student of the law, the ultimate goal is to pass the bar. But the maybe, uh, maybe the ultimate, ultimate, is to be the chief justice. Every kodi lang yan. Right? The ultimate desire of every disciple is to be a rabbi. A disciple? At the end of the day, he wants to be a rabbi. These people are highly respected. These people are highly honored in their community. In fact, you will notice, because people love God so much, they honor the rabbis. They tell that it is an honor for them to have rabbis stay in their house. No, they but be a lot of times, people invite Jesus, come on, stay in my house. In fact, Jesus was staying in the house of the in-law, uh, mother and the body, Peter. Right? With his disciples. Sagot niya. Parang pati na sa bahay mo isang katutok na lalaki. Papakainin mo yun. <laughs> it's no joke. But to them, it's an honor. Ako, my family knows, if I have the if I have the honor of housing pastors who are coming from a book, a brother, you have the privilege, right? It's, it, it's an honor to serve them. And Jesus Christ said, right? As you receive them, you receive me. What's that? They're, they're, they're highly honored. In fact, disciples honor their rabbi more than they honor their father. Now, how do you become a rabbi? Right? First of all, you have to master the Tanah. Tanah. What is Tanah? Not only the Torah, but the Tanah. The whole Old Testament. Tanah comes from three words. Ta, Torah, which is the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Na means Nabaim, Tana, right? Nabaim is the uh, prophetical books and historical books. So Tana. Ha comes from the word Hetuvin, meaning what? Writing, Psalms and Proverbs. So Tana is the law, it's basically the whole Old Testament. A rabbi should be a master of not only the Torah, but also the Tanah, and also of the Hetavim. You remember when, during the time of Jesus, it was said that when the Messiah comes, the scripture will testify about him. Remember? And, and, and when God spoke, and proclaim that Jesus Christ is his son. What did he say? This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. We read that. We're non-Jews. We say it's from God. Right? Clear. But if you think of it, if you're a Jew. And you heard it and you know that Jesus Christ, his proclamation should be manifested in scripture when Jesus, when God said this is my son that came from Isaiah Nava whom I love which comes from Psalm Hetovim listen to him comes from Deuteronomy Torah so when God spoke that he's saying Jesus Christ he is my son. 
is the fulfillment of the whole Tanah. And, 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 and we, today, we don't pick that up. But the Jews, they pick that up. And the rabbi should be a master of the Tanah. Second qualification of a rabbi is that he should be a great teacher. Good in parables, good in, you know, to them, kasi, you have to be a good storyteller. But if you know, Jesus, right? A lot of parables, a lot of story, a lot of. That. They want to demonstrate it, they want to show it. <coughs> and, and Jesus, all great um, rabbis, is such. Third. He should be a healer. Wow. Yes. You mean the other rabbis were able to heal? According to the history of the Jews, the great rabbis are. Question is, do they have the gift of healing? I do not know. What we know is, according to them, great rabbis they have. So maybe, maybe, they they pray to God. Those no, rabbis, you know, uh, for some reason, we have this thinking that a rabbi, they're kind of bad. But totally not, really. Especially as we go to the church, understand. Maybe, maybe, this is just now a maybe. They pray to God, and God answers their prayer, and heals. Then they know he has a close connection with God. Right? So he has to be a great a, a master of the Tanah, master teacher, he has to have a gift of, of healing. And lastly, he has to have authority. <coughs> what does that mean? In, in, in Hebrew, it's called Shmiha. Meaning, when he speaks, it has the same authority as God himself speaking. You have to have the Shmiha to be a rabbi. And, and where did you get meaning authority? Authority from God. They believe that <coughs> when Moses had to help, get some helpers, 70 of them, right? They chose seven, 70 elders. And they prayed. Him and Aaron, one at a time. And the Spirit, the Bible said, the Spirit of God went to them. And they believe, the Jews believe that the first rabbi would be Moses. So he gave the spirit, Shmiha, to those 70. They believe that that 70 will have their own disciples. And they would pray for him. And that 70 will get 70. In the time of Jesus, there were 12 rabbis which Shmiha, which has the authority of God. Now, how, how, does, how does a guy become a, a, a determine who is the rabbi with Shmiha? The elders of the town, imagine 12, konti lang yun, ha? the most respected people, the most, uh, the people that's passionate, leaders, elders, gifted, godly men, would come together, call a man, and place their hand on them. And they would say, in public, we recognize God's spirit in this person. This person has shmiha. Everybody knew this person has shmiha. You can't you cannot say, I have Shmiha. <coughs> I'm the one that has Shmiha. No. Imagine, only 12 has that. In the whole world at the time. And, and people recognize Jesus had one. Go to Matthew chapter 7, please.
Matthew chapter 7, verse 28. And I read. When Jesus had finished these words, the crowd was amazed at his teaching. For he was teaching them as one having shmiha and not as their scribes. In some version, Torah teacher. People recognized that Jesus had the shmiha. Because a lot of times, people were questioning him. Go to Matthew chapter 21, please. Matthew chapter 21, verse 23. It said, When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him, while he was teaching and said, But what shmiha are you doing these things? And he will give you this shmiha. <laughs> you got it? Uh, oh, we never saw you be blessed. And you're, you're coming out with this rule. Where did you get the shmiha? <laughs> right? And, 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 and the uh, theologians believe that the Shmiha of God, of Jesus Christ, came when he was baptized. Go to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Immediately coming out of the water, he saw the heavens opening and a spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came out of heavens, You are my beloved son, in you I am well pleased. Of all the great rabbis in history and they say there are only about less than a hundred in the 2000 or so history of all Halil, Kamiliel, right? These famous rabbis only one rabbi was given the Shmiha by God himself Jesus, the Messiah, right? It's only the rabbis that hash shmiha that are allowed to help disciples. Sila lang ang allowed to have Torah teachers are not. Torah teachers doesn't have, I know, disciples. High priests, none. Pharisees, Sadducees, no matter what disease you have, <laughs> you don't have disciples, Talmids as they call them. Disciples are those who follows rabbis that hash miha, who knows the Tanah, who is a good, good teacher and a healer. Now question, what then is a disciple? A lot of times we hear and we have this concept, a disciple is a student one who wants to learn. One who wants to know what the rabbi knows. He wants to study. He wants to be under his tutelage so that every knowledge of the rabbi he would learn and whatever he learns, he would apply it in his life, that it would affect his life. Right? 
But uh, a disciple, the word there is Talmid. T-E-L-M-I-D. A disciple, a Talmid, is not a student. A Talmid is a person who wants to be exactly like his rabbi. That is what a Talmid is. Not just a student, a Talmid, I want to be like my rabbi. That thought consumes him. The passion of his soul is filled with that. Every waking hour, when he wakes up, he thinks of that. When he goes to sleep at, at, at night, he thinks of that. More than anything else in his life, more than anything, the paramount thing in his life is, I want to be like my rabbi. What would, the, what would the rabbi do? How can I become more like him? I mean, how many of us today think that we are a Talmud of Jesus? For real. How many of us really consider ourselves disciples of Jesus? How badly do you want to be like Jesus? How consumed are you with the thought of knowing your rabbi? That means when they wake up, the thought in their mind is this. How can I be more like my rabbi today? At night, they ask themselves, why wasn't I like my rabbi today? Italmid is a 24-hour occupation, seven days a week. He's consumed by the thought. He can't sleep at night. Before he sleeps, he thinks of that. When he wakes up, he thinks of that. And all through that day, he observes his rabbi desiring to be like him. Nothing's more important in his life than to be like his rabbi. Sabi ko nga eh, the ultimate goal of every disciple is to be like his rabbi and to be a rabbi. If that is your purpose and you're very clear at that, man, that should consume you. Not this, not that, not this. To be like your rabbi. For any disciple now living, or even a child in Galilee, the burning question that they asked themselves growing up is, who will be my rabbi? There's 12, I know. But who will be my rabbi? I need a rabbi that knows that enough very well. I need a rabbi who's a good teacher. I need a rabbi who has the shmiha of God. That is the question of every Talmudins, every disciple. Now question, how do you become a disciple? Right? Typically, it starts at the age of five. Boys and girls, need to study. They enter the school, it's called Bet Sefer, at the age of five. There, they will learn the Torah. Major sections of the Torah. By the age of 12, with the, with, sorry, with the objective that by the age of 12, you memorize the whole Torah. 
Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Ang bigat. Bigat yan. Saan ti older you? Eleven? Oh, malapit na. Malapit na. Now, Mix, how old are you? Two years pa. <laughs> hagupit na, hagupit na to. <laughs> now, how do you know if a kid memorized the Torah? How would you know? He would now join them in Passover ceremony. Does that mean that the kid never attended the Passover? No. But the moment you memorize the Torah, word for, hindi you memorize the Torah, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, no, 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 yun naman. <laughs> yun naman ang dapat po memorize. Hindi yung title. <laughs> the moment you memorize the Torah, you're allowed to join the Passover. Meaning what? You're allowed to slay the lamb. At what age did Jesus attended his first Passover? Twelve. What does it mean? He memorized the Torah. Di ba sabi? He grew in knowledge. Right? He, he, was, he was like us. No? He, was, he had to study it. Women, swerte kayo. Because you, your, your life ends there. <clears throat> After the first menstrual cycle of a, of a, of a girl, the, the family will now announce, my daughter is now ready to marry. Yeah. After one year, chances are she gets married because they can't go to the next. The, the boys who's not able to memorize the, the Torah, Okay, na. Madami. I doubt it kung anyone tayo makakalam pa sila na grade 12. <laughs> right? So you can imagine, madami yung lagas. But those who memorize the Torah now enters the Tanah. Uh, enters the Beth Midrash. Right? Uh, first is Beth uh, uh, Beth Heifer now is Beth Nidrash so typically people age 12 would enter Beth Midrash those who passed only boys can study there for how long? 3 years and what happens there? They start memorizing now the Tana. Eh kung makapal na nga yung, <laughs> yung Torah eh. Talino ka ba? O ito naman Tana. <laughs> A lot of kids will not pass that level. Therefore what happens? They now become fishermen. They now become potters. By the way, why do girls and boys enter the Beth Bet Safir? Because that's where they learn to read and write. It's like the education, right? I said the, the synagogues where they learn how to read and write. So there's only one structure. Eh? So it's, 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 it's all in all. Multivitamins, lahat pwede. Lahat maayos. Right? Now, typically, by age 15, Na-memorize mo na rin yung tana. Wow! Bigat. So, can you imagine how many will not make it? Dami. Tayo, long gone na tayo, di ba? Hindi na tayo mo. Sorry, hindi. Bet na na. Uh, bet midrash. Okay. Now, if you're 15 and people say, okay, you're kind of good. Ah. You're kind of good. So, yung is at grade school, Bet Safir, next is Bet Midrash, high school, now college ka na. Okay. It's called Bet Talmud. From the age of 15 up to the age of 30, you would study. 
Not only sh should you memorize the Tana, you should also know the interpretation of the Tana. Again, a lot of them will fall out. Will not make it. Right? But at the age of 30 or so, you should have known or your knowledge is so good that you know the Tana word for word. Mm -hmm. If I say three verses or three, four verses, anyone in the Tana, you should be able to tell me the four verses behind it without telling me it came from Isaiah. Oh, I'm a big God. I'm a big God. Right? I, I, I tell you another four. I'll tell you five verses after this. Tayo. For God so loved the world. What's the verse before that? What the? <laughs> That's of God. <laughs> Let's keep it simple, no? No, but I'm telling you, this is the requirement. At the age of 30, if you really are, if you finish the course, now you become a teacher. Now you are qualified to be called a teacher of the law. Imagine. Now, this is the thing. Are you a Talmud? A disciple? No. But are you now qualified to teach others? Yes. Because what? I finished the course. I know the Talmud. I know the interpretation. But it doesn't make uh, the Tana. It doesn't make me a Talmud. While you're in, in Beth Talmud, typically, what you would do is, what you're thinking now while studying is, who would be my rabbi? I'm studying, but eventually I want to be a Talmud, a Talmudin. So you look around. Oh, that rabbi is brilliant. Hmm. But I cannot be like him. Oh, that rabbi, he has a pastoral care. Hmm. But I cannot be like him. Oh, this rabbi is a storyteller. Ah, yes. I want to be like that rabbi. So what do you do? <laughs> you go to that rabbi during his Bible study at the synagogue and you wait. You'll not talk. So obviously, if this is the group, all of a sudden, there's a new guy. Hmm, I notice you, right? And the rabbi will let that kid listen to him. It's a way for the rabbi to know the person and it's for the person to know the rabbi. He will allow the, 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 the kid to follow him wherever he goes. Right? That, that is, this, this listening will, will take about six months. Talagang get to know the rabbi so that you're sure. The rabbi also in turn is, I want to know this guy who wants to be my Talmud. Without the guy saying it, the rabbi knows na araw-araw nandito. May ibig sabihin to. And, and that's common, right? One day, the rabbi will acknowledge, Oh, Al, you're here. <laughs> the moment of truth. <laughs> Oh, I, I've noticed you for the last six months. You've been lingering around. Huh? And, and you, as, as, as a young boy, would say, Oh, wise and gracious rabbi, your reputation ex uh, exceeds you. You are a great teacher. I've heard your, your interpretation of the Tana, and I'm so blessed. But I have one question, rabbi. May I follow you? What is the boy saying? What he's asking is, 
Rabbi, can I be like you? Because to follow means to be like. That was the question. Rabbi, has God given me the gift to be a man like you? That's the implication of that. May I be, uh, may I follow you? Rabbis at that time are known to be very humble. And what, they'll, what he will say typically is, Allah, I'm honored that you've asked me. I'm blessed. I have heard what you said. It's a wonderful thing, Al, that you've decided to seek after God, to know His Word, to know what it means. And if I can help you, I would love to be your rabbi. Now tell me, what is the meaning of this verse? You'd answer. So tell me, what is the Ten Commandments? Grade one. Kaya na yung yan. Now tell me what did Micah meant when he said this. Now tell me what is the verses before this passage. Now he would quiz you, right? After some talking, the rabbi would say, typically to most, Al. You are a godly man. You know your scriptures. You know the interpretation. Go home. Be a fisherman. Go home. Be a farmer. God has gifted you, but you do not have the gift to be like me. So be the godliest fisherman that you can be. Be the most godly father you can be in the whole of Hillsboro. And study the word of God until the very end. He's not a Talmud. Right? He's extremely smart by this time. But the rabbi, so only really a few. Can you see how select that is? Can you see how you salan non? Only a few are given the privilege to be called a talmid. That's why they're highly respected. The rabbi is highly respected. The talmid is highly respected. Now all of a sudden. You will devote your whole life to follow the rabbi. Oh, it's a privilege. You're now so consumed to have that lifestyle. To follow the rabbi wherever he goes. You want to watch how the rabbi wakes up? How he sleeps? How he interacts with friends? How he interacts with enemies. How he behaves with his father, mother, brother, sister, cousins, the government. He wants to observe everything in his life. In fact, they say even when they go to the comfort room, the disciples join. Why? Because they want to know, is there a prayer we pray after? Lord, thank you that you give me some holes in my body to be able to take out the toxins in my body. We might find that prayer stupid. Try to imagine if one of them doesn't function. They want to. So they live with the rabbi. They want to know every situation in life, how to act and behave. <coughs> and then they move in with him. You know, the, the, the statement of a Talmud is, 
May the dust of your sandals fill me. That's their belief. That they walk closely with the rabbi. That when the rabbis walk, the sandals and the dust would fall on you because you were walking so closely. Fill me with your dust. If you are not dusty, you're not a talmid. Ang linis-linis sa mga. Mukhang laking bagong paligo. Lahat sila. Dusty. Pero ikaw. <laughs> right? That's the word. Another term they use is sat at the rabbi's feet. We have this wrong notion of discipleship. We think the paramount thing is to believe in Jesus Christ. Yes. And then we try to obey God's law. Yes. And then we try to become the disciples of Jesus Christ. Yes. But do you realize that's not God never looked or required us to find converts. He requires people to become disciples. You're either a disciple. Walang, w- sa Bible, right? Wala namang sinabing, ano eh? What? Go and make what? Disciples. The calling is to make disciples, not for people to be saved and to be a disciple is synonymous. Do you realize that? In fact, wala mong word to be saved. It's to be a disciple. The, the calling of Jesus is discipleship. And the Talmud has his attitude of studying, obeying, and imitating his rabbi. And everybody knew. Everybody knew that the moment my son becomes a Talmud, Bye-bye. I will not see him for a long period of time. He will leave my house and join the great rabbis. Now, go to Luke chapter 14. No wonder Luke 14 states this way. Luke 14 verse Verse 25. Now a large crowd were, were going along with him, Jesus, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, mother, wife, children, brother, and sister, and yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. No wonder. They knew that was the requirement. Remember what Paul said? Be imitators of me, just I am of Christ. Now let's look at the Talmids of Jesus. Who has seen the picture of you know, I'm not so, ano yun, yung video, video. But you know, maybe sometime I should, ano. The Last Supper. Kahit sa internet. Right? The Last Supper. Alam mo the picture? A lot of room. Super a lot of room. Uh, sample na lang. The bread. It's not, it's bread. Not unleavened bread. Hindi mo usong Bread dun eh, do unleavened. You look at the background, lush. Eh, nasa Judea sila, desert yun eh. I mean, it's, it's ano. Ito pa. Look at the, f- the disciples, right? Beard, bald, 40, 50 years old. That's not the age of the disciples. Do you know the age of the disciples? They believe? 20? Sophomores. About 15. Mm. Mm. Yes. No wonder. Think of it. Bet Talmud. He started at 15. 
Right? Ang ganda ng mga disciples. Pag magaling ka, mahaga ka mag-graduate eh. Go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 10. Most of them, I wouldn't say all. Mga 80% of them. Matthew chapter 10. Who has an NIV version here? Okay, it's a five. I'll read from an NIV version. <coughs> Matthew 10 verse 42 says, If anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple. Is Jesus mocking them? But they, they're little ones? Or are they really little ones? Right? Oh, yeah. Kaya ng away, mga bata eh. Nagkakapikunan. <laughs> right? Go to Matthew chapter 17, please. And I'll be reading the NIV. I don't really use NASB, but I found NIV here. A more proper. I'm not saying that it's a better, but it's always good to look. It's not the out of context, the other one or the other one. Matthew 17, verse 24 says, After Jesus and the disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collector of the two drama ta- temple tax came to Peter and asked, "You tax collector, sabi niya, doesn't your teacher pay temple tax? Yes, he does, sabi ni Peter. He replied, when Peter came into the house, Jesus first, uh, Jesus was first to speak. What do you think, Simon? He asked. From whom does the king of the earth collect duty and taxes? Parang alam na Jesus, no? From their own children or from others? From others, Peter's answered. Then the children are exempt, Jesus said to him. But so that we may not cause offense, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find four drachma coins. Take it, give it to them for my tax and yours. For how many? For two people. Why? Because the law states that only those above 20 should pay tax. Unless we say Jesus is a tax evader. Honestly, if he wants to put 100 coins in the mouth of the fish, pwede naman ha. Ang pinasok lang niya, four. Kasi bakit? Eh, daro lang kaming adult dito eh. Who should pay tax? O pagpukas. So which means, his disciples were young. And not old. And it is consistent. Right? To that principle. Now, Remember when Jesus called Peter and Andrew? What were they doing? Fishing. Fishing. What does it imply? They're not smart. <laughs> Naging fisherman. Right? I mean, they. Okay. It's in, it's in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18, but we don't need to read, go there. Just take my word. Right? <laughs> That, that they were fishing, and Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. You know it's there, okay? So, it, it, <laughs> I'll make you what? Fisher of men. Fun, funny thing, right? The symbol of Jesus is what? A fish. Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. That's what, that, that's what it means. Being a Galilean from Galilee, Right? Your desire since you were a kid is to be a Talmud and one day to be a rabbi. And, and, and you never had, so you know that these guys were not the valedictorian. They're not the star player. In fact, they're the rejects. I don't know how far up they went, but I know they were, they were fishermen. No, we, we know your story. Right? And Chachi says most of them are, are such. No. A lot of times, people came to Jesus and says, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. Luke chapter 9, right? 
A lot of times, the, the rich young ruler wanted to follow Jesus. Not one time. Not one time did Jesus say yes. Every time, it was Jesus who called. Election. Mm. No, that's the principle of election. You don't seek me. I sought you. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1. What we learned, verse 4. Right? Even before the foundation of the earth. In every case, it was Jesus who says, follow me, follow me, follow me. Now, Do you see, do you know the implication in when, Je when Jesus says, follow me? Erwin, I come to you when I'm Jesus, and I say, follow me. You know, the, you know what that means? Jesus Christ is saying, Erwin, you can be like me. Tita Melinda, you can be like me. That's what it means. You can be like me. Like Jesus. Imagine the apostles, the disciples running home. Daddy, mommy, the rabbi from Nazareth who does miracles says I can be like him. All the rabbis did not accept me, but this rabbi chose. Tiba sabi naman Bible yun eh. I mean, I take the rejects of this world so that the glory goes to me. But but I find that so powerful. It was Jesus who says. You can be like me. Right? That's why the disciples, you know, some people say, oh, I'm getting disciples. When Jesus called them, they dropped their nets and followed him. I would. All of a sudden, it's like this, eh? You're now living in the blah, blah, blah. Then one of day, one, of, one day, to tell says, you'll be the secretary of energy. Wow, why not? It's no surprise. It's, that's their desire. All of a sudden, all the students are home. Hindi mo na mag I couldn't memorize the Torah, the Torah. But now, I'm a disciple. I'm a Talmud. <laughs> right? So, so it's not. Ako man. Ako man. Hindi ako engineer, pero ang ginawa ko ng department of OPAC, public work, tatanggapin ko eh. <laughs> I learned na lang once I'm there. Go to Mark chapter 3, please. Mark chapter 3, verse 14. It says, And he appointed twelve so that they would be with him and he could send them out to preach. So they, so they would be with him. <coughs> and those disciples lived with Jesus and followed Jesus wherever he went 24 hours a day to watch him, to listen to him, and to be imitate him. Did these disciples become like Jesus? You bet you. Just read the Fox book of martyrs. You'll see how every one of them stood up. Some were flayed. Some were pushed over uh, a hill. Some were bashed with stone. Philip had seven daughters. According to his history, he was tied and he had seven daughters. 
All of them were raped in front of him. After that, they killed the daughters. After that, they called the father and crucified the father in front of Philip. Then Philip, lastly, was 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 nailed, also crucified upside down. And his last words was that of uh, Steph, Stephen. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. They become like Jesus. If you know Jesus as your Messiah, then He's inviting each one of us to be His talents. To be like Him. He's telling me, Bettina, you can be like me. If you're not like Jesus, it's not that you can't, but you don't want. He has given us His Spirit within us. What's the excuse? None. You're just really stubborn. Or maybe you're not a Talmud at all. You thought you were. Oh, that's frightening. That's a frightening thought. But if you are a Talmud, guess what? Anyone who sees you, anyone that talks to you, anyone that greets you, gets a glimpse of Jesus. How beautiful is that? He, you know, God designed to rule the world not through great preachers, not through great teachers, not through churches, not through programs, but through Talmids. That's you and me. We have that privilege. And we are called. Do you have that passion? Are you burning inside? But how can you be like him if you don't know him? Now, yesterday I was telling my wife. Clinic starts two o'clock. I was in the clinic. I wrote one thirty. Ah, mapaaga ako. They saw me at around four thirty. Oh God, late lang nandang doctor. But you know what? Praise God, because I'm just reading and reading and reading and reading and reading my Bible. I myself am convicted to this. I told myself, and I, kids are required this of us in our family at least to read. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John once a month forever. Not, not that we do. Of course, as you know, I have to study Ephesians, right? I have to study James. I have to study John. But, you know, to read Matthew, Mark, Luke because I want to know Him. So, yes, you did. I read it. I read it. And now, with a different time, I want to know. I, I want to be like Him. I want to know Him. Because Jesus Christ is looking for Tamidians. Matthew 10, 24 says, A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a slave above his master. We know that. It is enough. Jesus Christ is speaking here. It is enough for the disciples that he becomes like his teacher. That is enough. Question is, how much do you want to be like your rabbi? My desire, my friends, is that all of us would want to be like a rabbi. That the dust of the sandals of a rabbi will cover our body. That all of us will be dusty. Thus says the Lord. 
Let's pray. Father God, Yeshua, Jehovah, Father, I have failed a thousand times to be like you. I seek my own desires, yet I call myself what I need. And in reality, Father, I'm not. Help me, my God, to be more like you. Father, I want to be like you. That you have given me this privilege to be part of your kingdom. That one day, we will be all part of the temple that you will establish. And today you are calling me to be a Talmud so that I may find other Talmuds. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Some cookies. <laughs>